Welcome back. Uh, to talk about the markets and where we are headed, Madan Gopal Ramu, the fund manager and head of equity at Sundaram Alternate Assets, is now with us on the show. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining in. I was looking at one of your funds, which you initiated, um, you know, just about the investment horizon has been closed to about three years. Um, and this is a concentrated portfolio uh, where you have about 15 stocks. And some of the stocks that you've added in the last six months are Bajaj Finance, Chola Mandalam Investment and Finance, and Five Star Business Finance. So can you talk to us, you know, what prompted you to add these stocks in the last six months and why have you narrowed down to these three? Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Um, if you look at uh, broadly, we are very positive on the financial services space. Uh, we call it as financial inclusiveness. Uh, we feel that uh, over the next uh, 10 years, a large part of households uh, will become bankable. And uh, NBFCs will be the first leg of these uh, these uh, these uh, households will uh, borrow for an, uh, housing or a vehicle financing or uh, even for small businesses to borrow for their uh, working capital requirement. So in that in that way, we expect a lot of growth to happen in these areas in the financial space and particularly NBFCs to benefit from there. More so, over the next say two years, uh, we are at the peak of the interest rate cycle. We might enter into a period where the interest rate repo rate cut might also start from the second half of this year. When that happens, you will see margin pressure continuing for the banking space. Uh, so Nifty uh, 50 is full of banks. And if you look at NBFCs, they got the impact on the margin front due to the repo rate increase in the last one year. They will benefit from the margin expansion as the rate cut starts. So one, growth will also be positive for NBFCs. Second, even margin pressure that they faced for the last one year will ease out uh, uh, when the repo rate cut starts. So both this put together, we found that valuation-wise also, most of these stocks have not gone much, uh, and uh, they are at a slightly uh, lower level compared to the peak. So uh, uh, NBFCs look much more uh, appealing uh, on both different, both from the growth as well as from the valuation trend from a two to three year perspective. And that's the reason we have added some of the NBFCs uh, uh, into our portfolios. Okay, so you do like select uh, NBFCs. Got that, uh, Madan Gopal. Good to have you on the show. Thanks for joining in. Uh, wh what is the view that you're taking on metals, by the way, right now? Uh, and our colleague should point out, our colleague Nigel has just been telling us that, remember the news flash that was talking about higher coking coal prices in China today? Some of the contracts have jumped by some 5-7%. Uh, that actually would be a negative. Nigel tells us that obviously because lots of Indian companies import coking coal, so higher prices is not that good. But anyway, metal stocks are up and about. What are, what is your positioning uh, on this sector, Madan Gopal? So metals have underperformed, and uh, rightly so, given that uh, Chinese uh, China has not seen any resurgence, despite whatever government effort has been. And China is a large consumer of majority of the metals, and they've become net exporters last year in most of these metals. Uh, but we also are conscious that China has a production cap on most of these metals. Uh, a two-year of growth in China, many of these metals will reach that production cap. So then it becomes a lot more interesting. But is it going to happen in the next uh, six months to one-year time period? Probably not, because there is still surplus capacity in China. China has to come back really strong for this to happen, or uh, the global growth has to be really strong. Uh, at least for the next six months, we are not seeing, expecting a global growth to be really strong. So... Purely from a momentum perspective, once the rate cut scenario happens, you can expect some bit of returns to come from the metal stocks uh, the, or metal prices globally and therefore metal stocks. Uh, but purely uh, uh, from a demand supply uh, uh, kind of an equilibrium and that helping the metal prices to go up, uh, that is at least another uh, uh, another two years away in our opinion. Therefore, we, can, we need to be selective and we need to pay attention. Uh, certain sec, uh, specific metal uh, commodities like uh, aluminium, uh, definitely can benefit if China recovers a lot more quicker than what we expect. Uh, but all this, at least not in the immediate. Uh, in our portfolios, we have generally avoided metal space, given that it is very difficult for uh, to buy and sit on these stocks from a long-term perspective. Uh, you have to be uh, you have to be on uh, you have to be looking at these metal prices, tracking them very closely. Uh, therefore, we have generally avoided. But whenever there has been a deep value, we have touched it, but very rarely. So uh, even if we play it, uh, it will be uh, it will be uh, it will be about taking a one-year view. Uh, but at least that is uh, at least this year looks difficult in the metal space. Mm. 
What about BHEL? Um, you know, people in the past historically have burned their fingers when they invested in BHEL. And now when they look at the kind of rally it's seen, in the last one year, the stock has gone up 200%. And now they think that perhaps, you know, shoot, we missed the rally. And now maybe uh, it's a bit excessive, the valuations right now, the projections that the street is making. How would you approach a stock like BHEL now? So uh, last year has been a year for power sector, right? As per a long period, uh, they saw the peak demand coming back. And therefore, uh, every, every uh, stock in the power space has given a phenomenal return. Uh, but I would like to differentiate here between BHEL and other stocks. Uh, if you look at uh, what is the key uh, theme behind investing in BHL after so many years, actually I started my career and the initial part of my career I was negative on BHL almost like for the last 10 years now. Uh, I have turned positive last year primarily because I found that the coal-based power capacity in India is lagging the peak demand. So that cannot be the case because you cannot meet the peak demand anything other than the coal or gas maximum. Uh, you cannot depend on renewable, uh, particularly the peak it happens in the evenings. Uh, therefore, we feel that if uh, uh, the country will uh, reach a deficit in the peak demand, uh, peak supply demand uh, uh, equilibrium, somewhere, say, in the next two, three years, if they don't address and uh, start placing a lot of orders, uh, we expect that the uh, ordering momentum in the coal-based power plants will pick up, and it has already started, and it will sustain for at least another two, three years unless we see a uh, decline in the peak power demand in 2024. Uh, so uh, that gives us a positive uh, view on BHN. Uh, margins, uh, we, we will have to wait and see how much margins they kind of deliver on this. Uh, but what positive thing is, five years back, there were many players in this space and the total capacity of power boilers used to be as high as even 25,000 megawatt. Today, I think uh, almost, almost most of them have left the space. Uh, we are left with only BHL. To an extent, Thermax might participate. Uh, LNT has already shifted a large part of its uh, capacity to outside the power sector. Therefore, uh, you have a scenario that BHL might actually gain a lot of market share of whatever order is coming through. Uh, that also will help BHL to recover in terms of uh, earnings uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so that is the reason behind BHL. But I, uh, if you look at most of the other power stocks, it's also done well. Uh, if you look at NTPC, uh, NTPC might benefit, but not to the extent what an early cycle player like a BHL will benefit, because NTPC will uh, see the benefit of these uh, orders and translating into earnings almost five, six years later when these projects get commissioned. Uh, so, but now uh, everything in the power sector rallies. So that's the differentiation. So when the when the reality strikes, probably BHL might sustain this rally for some more time. Uh, but we have to be careful about other power sector companies where the rally has been also very sharp. Okay. okay, all right, uh, Madan Gopal, we'll leave it on that note. Thank you very much. Uh, good having you today on the show. Look forward to more conversations. We'll take a quick break on that note. We'll come back.